Chemistry 4131 Solution Calorimetry Heat of Reaction in Solution This experiment is similar to the first experiment, bump calorimetry. The difference is, in bump calorimetry, the reaction is done on the constant volume. In this experiment, the reaction is done on the constant pressure. The reactor of this experiment is a dual flask. Inside a filmed plastic block, separated by air gap. This ensures the process is adiabatic, meaning heat cannot get out of this uh, dual flask. If the reaction involves a solid and a liquid sample, liquid sample is placed inside this uh, dual flask, and the solid inside a bell-shaped sample cell. The bottom of this cell is a Teflon dish. A picture of this cell is shown here. Solid is placed inside this Teflon dish, and the sample bell is then carefully pressed over this dish and the cell is then placed inside the calorimeter. A retainer screw is used to connect the cell with a steering shaft so that the cell can rotate during the reaction. To start the reaction, you push a glass rod downwards, and this will separate the Teflon dish from the cell and the solid goes into the solution and the reaction starts. The temperature is measured by a thermistor. Similar to the bump calorimeter experiment, we first need to calibrate the calorimeter to find the heat capacity. Since the reaction is done under constant pressure, uh, the heat capacity is Cp. We use a, no, a reaction with known enthalpy change, and the reaction uh, is uh, acid-base neutralization reaction. And acid is liquid hydrochloric acid, and the base is trist hydro hydroxymethylaminomethane, or simply trist. So trace is a solid, hydrochloric acid is a liquid. When the hydrochloric acid concentration is 0 0.1 and the temperature is 298.15 Kelvin, the reaction enthalpy is 245.76 Joule per gram. So if in the reaction we use trace with a mass M, then the uh, reaction enthalpy should m times 245.76 joule. Okay, that's how much heat will uh, will be released with m grams of trace. What if temperature is different from 298 Kelvin? We need to make a correction, and the correction is 1.4. 36 times the temperature difference. Now, for the reaction, we start with, say, T1, and then there's a temperature jump to T2, because it's an uh, exothermic reaction, so temperature should increase. So what temperature should we use, T1 or T2? In fact, we use a temperature between these two temperatures, and we use 63% of the temperature rise. So the temperature we use to make the correction should be the this temperature, the 63% of the temperature rise, okay, plus the initial temperature. How do we calculate the heat capacity of the calorimeter? 
The reaction is adiabatic, so heat is zero. Constant pressure, so heat is entropy change. So for the whole system, the total ent entropy change should be zero. And the system include uh, the reaction between uh, trace and hydrochloric acid and the rest of the system called the calorimeter. So the calorimeter entropy change should be negative the entropy change of the reaction. And the reaction entropy change can be calculated if we know the mass of the trace as we shown in the last slide. And the entropy of a calorimeter is the heat capacity of calorimeter times temperature rise due to the reaction. And therefore, heat capacity can be calculated by the reaction entropy divided by temperature rise. The temperature rise can be measured, and the reaction entropy can be calculated if we know the mass of trace. Note that this heat capacity of the calorimeter has two parts. One is the aqueous solution. One is the empty calorimeter. For uh, the calor calibration step or the neutralization step, we use hydrochloric acid. Only a very small amount of hydrochloric acid react with trace. Large amount of hydrochloric remains unreacted. Okay, so this will contribute to the CP double prime. For hydrochloric acid 0.1 molarity, the heat capacity is 4.19. If we use 100 milliliter of hydrochloric acid, then CP double prime should be 100 times 4.19. And so that is CP double prime. And the empty uh, calorimeter heat capacity, the CP prime then can be calculated. So CP prime is CP of the total calorimeter, which is calculated in this equation, minus CP double prime that are calculated by the volume of the hydrochloric acid used times uh, 4.19. Now the reason we calculate this empty calorimeter is because uh, for different reactions, uh, this CP double prime may change. So for neutralization uh, or standardization step, we use hydrochloric acid. But for the chemical reaction, later steps, we may use sulfuric acid. So CP double prime differ is different from reaction to reaction. But the empty calorimeter is the same. All right, so we calculate the CP double uh, CP prime for the empty calorimeter. We use this for for different reactions. The reaction we are going to measure in this experiment is a redox reaction between permanganate and iron two plus. Permanganate is reduced to iron uh, to manganese two plus, and iron two plus is oxidized to iron 3 plus. The reaction is simple and very fast. We use large amount of iron 2 plus and sulfuric acid. So permanganate is the limiting reagent. Uh, so you need to measure the mass of potassium permanganate very carefully. Again, the reaction is adiabatic and constant pressure. So the total enthalpy of the system is zero and the total enthalpy is the entropy of the reaction and the entropy of calorimeter. Now, in this case, uh, the reaction entropy is unknown, which needs to be calculated. And this equals negative entropy of the calorimeter. And the uh, entropy of calorimeter is calculated by the heat capacity of calorimeter times temperature rise. Heat capacity is the empty calorimeter heat capacity plus the heat capacity of the aqueous solution. So uh, the empty calorimeter uh, is already calculated using the standardization step, as we shown in the last slide. 
for, for this reaction, the aqueous solution is sulfuric acid. For 0.5 molarity sulfuric acid, the heat capacity is 4 joule per Kelvin per milliliter. So uh, if, we, if we use, let's say, 110 uh, milliliter of sulfuric acid in this reaction, then CP2 uh, double prime should use uh, 110 of the volume times CP uh, double prime for uh, joule per Kelvin per milliliter. So, so this multiply uh, give you CP double prime and you add empty calorimeter, you get the total heat capacity. All right? If you uh, measure delta T, then the product of these two give you the, heat, the enthalpy change of the calorimeter. And the negative of that one is the reaction uh, enthalpy change that we want to measure. To calibrate the calorimeter, you pipette 100 milliliter of 0.1 molarity hydrochloric acid into the dual flask. And then you weigh 0.5 grams sample of chis to the nearest 0.1 milligram into the Teflon dish. And carefully press the glass bell over the dish. So assemble the rotating cell, place it in calorimeter, and start the motor. So the cell start to rotate. And now you let the system reach a steady state. And that means temperature becomes stable. So if you have a time, a temperature as a function time, you see a straight line before the reaction. And now you start the reaction by depressing the push rod to open the rotating cell. So the solid goes into the solution reaction start and you should see temperature jump and then become stabilized again. So at the conclusion of the run, stop the motor. The detailed procedure can be found uh, on the handout. For the redox reaction, you first make iron sulfate the solution by adding 1.5 gram of uh, iron sulfate hexahydrate uh, into a beaker with 150 milliliter of 0.5 molarity sulfuric acid. And then you transfer 100 milliliter of this solution into the dual flask. And now you weigh uh, 0 0.1 grams of potassium permanganate powder to the nearest of 0 0.1 milligram. Remember, this is the limiting reagent, so do it very carefully and put into the uh, Teflon dish. You add additional 10 milliliter of 0 0.5 molarity sulfuric acid, so the total sulfuric acid uh, you add it to the system is uh, 110, so 100 plus 10, now 110 milliliter. So assemble the rest of the sample cell as described on the handout, and after the system reach equilibrium, start the reaction by depressing the, pushing, uh, the push rod, and after the reaction is over, disassemble the system and clean it. The procedure to find the temperature rise, uh, delta T, is similar to uh, the one I explained in the bumble calorimeter. So I had a, a video to explain how to use a Microsoft Excel program uh, to find the delta T. Now in the next two slides, I will explain a little more. So with delta T, then you can calculate the CP, you can calculate the uh, reaction enthalpy. Uh, in kilojoule per mole for the for this redox reaction, and uh, the textbook also asks you to look for the standard formation enthalpy of the reactants and the product. So remember, if you have a reaction uh, reaction reactants A B product C D, and if you know the standard formation enthalpy of the reactants and the product, then the reaction enthalpy then the reaction enthalpy of this reaction can be calculated by the product of, 
uh, formation enthalpy minus uh, reactant enthalpy, uh, formation enthalpy. So the text will ask you to calculate in theory what should be the standard reaction enthalpy and compare with the one you calculate from the experiments. All right, you compare these two. Okay, explain the reason for the difference if you see difference. And in um, I used one data uh, uh, I calculate, and the difference is uh, about uh, less than four percent. So if yours is uh, let's say calculated uh, ten percent or more, then something is wrong. To find the delta t, the temperature rise, uh, first uh, you want to make a plot of all the data. For example, uh, you find the column of time and the column of temperature, and you choose all of them and plot it, and you may get something strange. For example, maybe you get something like this one. Okay, so obviously these. Uh, are the data after the instrument turned off, okay? And so you, you should discuss, discard all these data, and uh, you also discard this one before the reaction. And so now you have a S shape, okay? This is before reaction, this is after reaction, and this is during reaction. So that's what you, you should see, all right? And uh, it's better you separate into three theories. And series one, is before reaction and the two is out, uh, uh, during reaction and the three is after reaction you see uh, three different color and um, the before reaction after reaction you should get a straight line and uh, you should have equation use uh, the uh, linear fit okay you get r uh, square should be uh, close to 0 0.99 all right so you get a straight line now if it's not straight for example you let's say you okay so you should choose those those data are straight okay and you get a good uh, uh, r square okay close to one and so that's after reaction now if here you have something like this you remove them you get here straight okay and then you choose these two okay data you find the middle point okay let's say 500 is, uh, seconds is the middle point and using the equation for the after reaction you you find you calculate the uh, temperature okay uh, up, upper temperature and using the equation uh, of this linear equation before reaction you calculate the lower temperature and this difference is the estimated delta t temperature rise so then uh, to find the accurate temperature rise you use this delta t times 0.363 Okay, that's estimated uh, change. So then you find a uh, point where this length equals 0 0.63 delta t. Okay, so find a time so that the data uh, temperature difference to this line is 0 0.363 delta t. Now if uh, it's between two data, okay, for example, between these two, then you can average them, okay, middle point of these two, all right? And then from this point, you plot a vertical line, okay? And the here, intersection with the extrapolated linear line, and that's the TF, final temperature, and the intersection with the uh, linear equation, uh, before reaction is the Ti. So Tf minus Ti, okay, that's the delta T for the reaction. The redox reaction we perform in this experiment is a fast reaction. And because it finishes so fast, 
and it takes only a very short time and therefore you only see a few points uh, in the temperature rise uh, section uh, if you only see one point okay then just use this one to plot the vertical line and the intersection of these two one is tf one is ti okay you still need to plot the linear curve uh, before and after reaction and extend it and you get these two points okay that's delta t all right and now if you you see two points okay so in this case like this one so you see two points then you can uh, use the middle between these two points okay so this is one and this is two you just use the middle of them and then plot a mid a vertical line and then again the middle uh, the intersections give you ti tf and you calculate delta t so this applies for the permanganate reaction now for the trace reaction uh, you have a nice uh, s shape so you still need to uh, find 63 percent of the rise the point and then uh, draw the vertical line 